Good morning, Reunion. My name is Alex, and I'm part of the teaching team here at Reunion. I'm so glad that you joined us this morning. Reunion is a family of churches throughout the Boston area with a simple mission of helping people find their way back to God. And we wish that we could be gathering in person, but we want to do so in a way that's safe for our neighbors and our community. So for now, we're going to be continuing to meet online. Before we start, though, let me remind you of a few things. First, I'd love for you to invite others to this online gathering. You can click the share button below to share with a neighbor, a family member, a friend, or a coworker. Chances are that you know someone who needs encouragement and a message of hope during these very trying times. So please go ahead and invite them. Now, for those of you who are brand new to Reunion, let me be the first one to welcome you. We are so glad that you found us online. Our hope is that this community can be a family for you, a place where you will feel belonging and where people can walk alongside of you on your journey. It's been great to see so many people get connected to our community recently, even though we aren't meeting in person. Now, we'd love for you to go to our website, reunionmovement.com, and please click on the chat bubble that says connect with us. Uh, or you can use your phone and scan the QR code using your camera, and it will take you directly to our connection card. Using that, we'll reach out to you and help you find out more about us and get you connected to the many things that are happening in our community. Now, you can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, if you have something that you need prayer for, please text PRAYER to 617-415-4466. Our staff and elders would love to pray with you. This morning, we're going to be having a time of worship with Bailey, Chloe, and Jeff. And then we'll share some short announcements, and Nathan's going to be kicking off a brand new Advent series. After that, we're going to have a time of communion together, and then we'll wrap up with one last song and a benediction. So let's worship together with Bailey, Chloe, and Jeff.
Oh, sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemy, sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief, oh, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody, oh, sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me, so sing a little louder. Oh, I'm gonna sing in the middle. Hey there, church. My name is Parker Allen, and I'm one of the elders here at Reunion. As you can tell by my festive sweater and holiday decor, we're officially into the Christmas season. Now on the church calendar, this time of year is referred to it as Advent. And every year during this season, we at Reunion celebrate one of our core values of generosity by participating in what's called Advent Conspiracy. 
Reunions has participated in Advent Conspiracy for more than a decade. And during that time, thanks to the generosity of this community, we've been able to give away more than $300,000. Last week, during Fifth Sunday, we introduced you to three partners that we want to highlight this year during Advent Conspiracy. And each week over the next three weeks, we'll tell you a little bit more about one of them. Today, I want to focus on the work of Pine Street Inn. Pine Street serves nearly 2,000 homeless men and women every day in the greater Boston area which makes them the largest homeless service provider in New England. Founded in 1969, the Inn's ultimate goal is to end homelessness by making permanent housing a reality for all. They offer a range of programs, including housing for 850 tenants, 670 emergency shelter beds in four locations across Boston, workforce development programs, and the preparation of 2,700 meals every day in their kitchen. We hope you'll join us in supporting this important work by participating in our December 20th Advent Conspiracy Offer. You can also support the Mission and Reunion by clicking Give on our webpage, or by taking your phone and pointing the camera at the QR code on the screen, which will take you directly to our giving page. We miss seeing all of you and want to know how you're doing, so we hope you'll join us tonight for location check-ins via Zoom at 8 p.m. You can find the links at reunionmovement.com for your location check-in. And we'll hope you'll join us for a time to reconnect virtually, see some familiar faces, and just chat for a bit. Lastly, we're launching a brand new virtual board game community for those who like to connect via tabletop games. It'll meet every other Sunday afternoon. We'll be hosted by Jeff Kustra from our Somerville location. If you're interested, just text board game, all one word, to 617-415-415. 4466. Now, I want to introduce Zoe and Mandy from Reunion Kids as they lead us with our Advent reading, and then we'll hear from Nathan. Good morning, Reunion. I'm Dennis, and I'm from the Quincy location. This year, more than ever, our men and women in the prison system needs to see the love that Christ has for them. The holiday season is an especially bleak and difficult time for people who are incarcerated. For many, the card that they receive from you through our Christmas card outreach for inmates will be the only piece of mail they will receive this Christmas. Receiving a Christmas card is a piece of hope and love to an individual who are striving to change their lives and walk with Christ in a place that seems so dark and cold during the Christmas season. If you are interested in writing Christmas cards, and bring an encouragement to those who need it, please text CCO to 617-415-4466. Thank you. Today begins the season we call Advent, which means coming. It's a time of remembrance and anticipation. We prepare to celebrate that Jesus came into the world at Christmas. We also remember God's people, called Israel, who waited for the arrival of their promised Messiah long ago. The coming of God is often unnoticed. This is one of the core messages of Advent. God shows up in the places of the world we would never imagine. At Reunion, we have used candles as a symbol during Advent to help us remember this ancient story that we are a part of that has not yet reached its conclusion. So today, Zoe is going to help us once again join this tradition by helping us to light our first Advent candle. Doesn't it feel like the world could use a little more help right now? So many things around the world seem like they aren't right. But today, we are reminded that there is another way. There is a kingdom to come where injustice is made right, where hurts are healed and there are no more tears. Jesus came to show us that his kingdom looks different than what we see, and that we can begin to live like we belong to that kingdom today. His kingdom looks like love, justice, service, peace, and hope. And Zoe is going to read sections from Psalm 25. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. 
Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. All right, so today we light the hope candle, and we hope for more of Jesus' kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven, today and forevermore. Will you pray with me? Father God, um, we see the brokenness and hurt around us, and it's easy to get discouraged. But we pray that in this season of Advent, that we might remember your promise. May the celebration of the birth of Jesus remind us that you are faithful, that love has won, and your kingdom and light continues to break through the darkness until the time that your creation and family are once again restored as you intended. God, may we be a people of hope who always remember that light has overcome the dark and that you are still at work renewing all things. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Nathan, and I'm the Somerville Location Pastor. I'm super excited to be with everyone this morning. My hope is that here at Reunion, um, you get a chance to find what I found, a family. And this morning, we're kicking off this brand new teaching series called Advent Conspiracy, where we're going to be looking at uh, this Christmas season, this season of anticipation, anticipation for a Savior, the coming birth of Christ. And we call it a conspiracy because our hope is really that we learn to do this season differently than we observe in the world around us. I don't know about you, with me, Christmas always makes me feel um, a little homesick, a little nostalgic, just kind of reminds me of Christmases growing up and times growing up. And it got me thinking about uh, this time that I was in high school. And I don't know about you, I don't know what your experience with church is. I grew up in church. Uh, I've been going uh, to church and to youth group uh, kind of my whole life. And I remember a time when um, I had this big crush on this girl in my youth group, because that's like the stereotype of what every youth group boy uh, does. And I was, I mean, I was like, I think I was 14 or 15 at the time. So I did all the stuff that you do when you're a 14 or 15 year old, and you have a crush on a girl in your youth group, right? Like I made sure that we always ended up in the same small group together. Uh, I would hang out in the areas in uh, our building that I knew that she was going to be at before youth group started each week. I made sure to find out if she was going to go to an event or if we had a group of friends hanging out, I was going to find out if she was there. Uh, I wanted to know. I even one time went to play tennis because I knew that she would be there. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. I hate tennis. I'm really bad at it, but she was there, right? So I decided that I was going to go. And I did this for weeks. Honestly, I probably did this for months, but my brain is just trying to give me a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But uh, I, I just would constantly try to be around her. I always wanted to ask her out, but I never did. Right? I was too nervous. I thought for sure she was going to turn me down. And one day I was hanging out uh, in kind of like our youth group space before our time started with one of our mutual friends. And we we're just kind of talking and all of a sudden she started asking me about her. And she asked if I was interested in this girl that I liked. And I said, yeah, I mean, for sure I am, but I don't, I don't think she's interested in me. And I'll never forget my friend looked at me and said, haven't you noticed how she always hangs out with you before our youth group starts or how she always tries to arrange herself to make sure that she's in your small group or how she even went to go play tennis with you? And I heard this and it gave me hope, right? It, if I'm honest, it completely changed how I looked at the situation, right? I didn't have to fear rejection anymore. I knew that if I asked her out, she was going to say yes. So, I mean, I asked her out and you know how the story goes. She said yes. And we lived happily ever for the next year. 
because we were still in high school, right? So come on, give me a little bit of a break. But, you know, maybe you don't have this amazing life altering experience like the story that I have. But I do think if we're honest, many of us, we understand this idea that hope, it can change our perspective, right? When we have hope, we act differently. Maybe there was a time you applied to a college and you were so nervous about getting accepted. And then you realized a friend got accepted who had similar grades and you had hope it gave you this chance to relax. Maybe you were applying for a job and then you found out you knew someone who worked there and you were more at ease as you interviewed because you had this hope. I mean, honestly, in a year like this one, doesn't pushing through the uncertainty doesn't pushing through the fear require hope? I mean, especially now as we approach this Christmas season, as we approach the end of the year, this long, frustrating year. I mean, this season that could be marred by frustration as we're tired, as work is ramping up for some of us, as kids are still in school online, as we're trying to figure out what it looks like to help them go to school online, as we miss life as it was. We want to grasp the sliver of joy this holiday season. We want something just to be hopeful about. And this morning, we're going to dig into a story in scripture where we see a lot of relationship tension. And I'm not talking about a teenager who was too afraid to ask a girl out, right? I'm talking about a man whose world was shattered. A guy who believed that he had been betrayed by the woman that he was engaged to. And who knew culturally the decision that he was supposed to make if he found out the betrayal was true. See, the Christmas story in Matthew's gospel, it opens up with the genealogy of Jesus, chasing Jesus' lineage all the way back to Abraham. But immediately after this, the story jumps straight into the story of this guy named Joseph. Not Jesus' birth, not Mary, his mother, not the shepherds, not the wise men. It's actually Joseph's story in Matthew that sets the stage for the coming Messiah. I'm going to pick this story up in Matthew 1, starting verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was, a fr- was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. And I just want to pause there. I mean, honestly, can you imagine? Put yourself in Joseph's shoes. Can you imagine Joseph is engaged? He's working. He's trying to prepare a home and a life for Mary before he's allowed to take her to be his wife. He wants to set up an amazing life for Mary, and then he finds out while he is most likely away that she is pregnant. I mean, he's, he's got to be heartbroken. He's going to be devastated. Now take a look at this next phrase. But after he had considered this. Now, the English translation here, it doesn't really... It doesn't fully grasp the emotion that Joseph is feeling in this moment. The Greek phrase that's actually used here that we translate as considered this is enthymeomai. And this same phrase is used later on in Matthew's gospel, but the second time around that it's used, it's actually translated with the phrase became furious. So we might miss this, but Joseph isn't in a stoic, emotionless consideration when he's thinking about these things. Joseph is angry. He is hurt. He is in mourning. I mean, the text even kind of suggests that he is experiencing this full emotion of wrath, anger to the most extreme degree. I mean, this is a broken man feeling the full anger of his brokenness. And then an angel shows up. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, 
because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he, he will save his people from their sins. And now Joseph hears this, and he's still having these feelings, right? He is still knowing what he is supposed to do. He's still supposed to divorce her at the least. And see, even in his anger, he's divorcing her in quiet. And culturally, he should be advocating for a more severe punishment. You know, according to the culture of his time, he's already tempered his anger. I mean, at least that's how it would have been viewed. But after this conversation, see, everything changes. The story goes on. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. I mean, what causes someone to completely change direction in a moment as serious as this one? Hope. The angel shares this information about a coming Messiah, but it's Joseph's hope, his belief in this without affirmation that empowers him to take Mary as his wife, to raise this son. Hope came in in this season of darkness, and it changed everything. And this is much bigger in the Christmas story. Right In the entire Christmas story, this is a season that was marked by chaos, by brokenness, by corruption, by Roman domination, and hope entered into Joseph's story. And he was promised that God in human flesh was coming in the form of a baby. And when Joseph heard that, it changed him. J.I. Packer, he puts it this way, the Christmas message is that there is hope for a ruined humanity, hope for pardon hope of peace with God, hope of glory, because at the Father's will, Joe, Jesus excuse me, became poor and was born in a stable so that 30 years later, he might hang on a cross. See, that's what hope does. It changes the way that we live and move. And for those of us that call ourselves apprentices of Jesus, we know this to be true. There is no greater hope that we have than the hope of the gospel. See, this Advent season, we anticipate the coming of a baby, a savior, but we also know the end of the story. We know that baby grows up, becomes a man named Jesus, and shows us what it looks like to live for a different purpose and for a different kingdom in the here and now. And eventually, he dies on a cross. He's buried in a tomb and raises from the dead three days later. We have hope in the life, in the death, in the resurrection of Jesus. We know that it has the power to change our lives, to change our communities, and to change our world. And it is in that that we hope. We hope for a coming Savior. We hope in the power of the gospel. We believe it to be true. And because we believe that it is true, we can live differently. So I just want to ask, where does our hope come from? You know, like I said, as we approach the end of this extremely difficult, extremely frustrating year, as we prepare to enter into the chaotic and what might be difficult season of Christmas, where does our hope come from? See, if our hope comes from this Chris, Christmas story, if our hope comes from God entering into the darkness, entering into and redeeming the story of humanity, it calls us to live different. It calls us not to live into the frustration of the holiday season. And I mean, honestly, I get it. Many of us just had Thanksgiving in a completely different way. As we look around our country, COVID numbers are spiking again. We're watching stuff shut down again. It feels a little bit like we just hit the reset button on this entire year. We're stuck in our homes. We are missing 
our friends. We are frustrated with our families. It would be easy to let anger and frustration win the day this Christmas, but hope Hope reminds us that even in extremely difficult times, we can live out love and grace. And we can do this even when our circumstances are screaming at us to respond differently. It calls us not to put our hope in the stuff of this holiday season. It reminds us that we can't outspend the brokenness in the world around us, but hope calls us to repurpose those finances for kingdom purposes. And really, this is what this Advent conspiracy is all about. That's why one of the four big ideas of Advent conspiracy is spending less, right? We don't have to go over the stats. We know how astronomical spending becomes during the holidays. And hope shows us that we can take those same finances And we can use them differently. That we can bless partners and organizations that are bringing forth glimpses of God's kingdom today. We can see the gospel in action. So as we hear about our organizations we're partnering with, as we hear about Pine Street Inn and Community Cooks and Fostering Hope and how they're taking just small steps to make the world a little bit more like it is in heaven. Let's let hope dictate how we engage. Let's let the hope of the gospel change the way that we live. Let's let the hope of God entering into the story through this Christmas season, let's let that hope fuel us to make things on earth as they are in heaven. Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you that because you came, there's hope. Hope that things can be different. Hope that the brokenness that we see is not the end. Hope that we can find ways to shed, spread love and grace in such a difficult season. Hope that justice will win the day. Hope that you will win the day. In a season that really in a lot of ways in a year that's just wanted us to lose that hope. I ask that you remind us of that today. And that brings us peace and that brings us joy and that leads us to action. We love you. Amen. Uh, Here in a second, we're gonna um, participate in this thing that we do together called communion. Communion is just a time for us to pause and reflect on the cross. So if you have something at your house to represent bread, something at your house to represent juice, you wanna go ahead and grab those elements. Uh, We'll take a second and take communion together. But before we do that, I just want us to pause and reflect on this story. You know, the Christmas season is all about Jesus entering into the story and in communion we get a remind we get to be reminded that as Jesus entered into the story a time came where the story changed when he died and was resurrected there is hope that God came but there is hope that God redeems and my favorite part about advent is that we get to hold both of those as we take communion together that there's celebration in the birth of Jesus and there's celebration in the death of Jesus because both of them are God reaching out and saying he loves us and he cares for us and he wants to make us new. So let us be reminded together this morning that God is redeeming us and hope is empowering us to spread that redemption to the world around us. If you have the elements, let's go ahead and take communion together now.
promised Messiah. Angels, let your song begin. Here comes heaven. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Here comes heaven. Sinner, wait no more. Love has broken the sign. Come, let us adore. The Savior is with us. Angels, let your song begin. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'd like to close this in a time of benediction. We are witnesses to the dawning of that great light coming into the world, Emmanuel, God with us. May we depart from this gathering with our faces set on the sun, that our lives may serve as a reflection of God's light in the midst of our darkness, that our very lives may announce the advent of the Messiah. We serve our city in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and live the church. Thank you.